Hello everyone and welcome to this video where we are continuing work on the Alta locomotive. Now I know this is a multi-part video and some of you have been watching from the beginning. If not, I have other videos to offer, but in this one we're going to continue on and develop this. So first things first I will bring to your attention is I've done some changes. I've added some equipment which may be useful for you those for those of you that want to do missions and such. So I've had added here a uh, sort of cargo equipment and down here some emergency equipment including a firefighting outfit. So this gives us some new areas to uh, explore. The mechanical room is done and the last finishing touches of the engine room are being added. So with that in mind, now there's a couple of things that were mentioned on my Discord server of suggestions on things we can add and do to optimize our system further. The microcontroller that I've been developing uses a compass. I mentioned that in the other video. Now, while the compass system seems to give me good results, I have a couple of fears with it. A fear being if the turn is so big as to set the compass off and now all of a sudden a slaved locomotive thinks that it's facing the other direction. Another problem that I'm thinking about is what if the train itself is so long as to wrap itself around a corner and then again not facing the same direction. So there is, there are some logical issues with using a pure compass. I do understand it works as a rudimentary option, but I was given a much better suggestion on my Discord server and that is to utilize the front and rear electric connectors differently, communicating with the microcontroller and based on if the front or rear are connected, that determines the orientation of any slaved locomotive, not the compass itself. In addition to that, a very good point was brought up, what if someone is using a train car that is not one of mine, meaning it does not have the composite pass-through that I'm putting. So if there is a locomotive in the front and a slaved one in the rear, how will they communicate if the, um, the stock does not allow communication through the connector? Now, while I personally agree that it is my creation and my creation should follow my own system. I do think that there is some something to be said about trying to optimize it such to work with some other creations, maybe not perfectly. Of course, I have not adapted one of the existing uh, systems, but what I may do is add up here an option to make the locomotive pair up with other locomotives via radio control. So this, the, the system that I've built will be left as it is, meaning it will still use the uh, connectors to communicate, but a secondary system will be added to communicate via radio. So that's number one. And number two is that's going to give you the option to expand your fleet, use my locomotives with other ones that are not part of my system or part of other people's systems. First, I've added a little bit of realism when the ditch lights are on here and you are pressing the horn. It's going to rotate the lights like this, kind of giving people a heads up that a train is coming. When you're not pressing the horn, the lights do not flash. And when the lights are off and you press the horn, they don't flash. So it's only when they're on and you are pressing the horn. Yes, there are ways to make it run after you let go, but I just like the idea of the control. You're pressing horn, they're flashing if they're on. So it just kind of goes hand in hand. And that's this little microcontroller here that I've quickly thrown together. That was sort of to get the very easy thing right off my plate first and foremost. Now, if we dig into our massive train microcontroller, I'm gonna rev it up to 1.5. And with 1.5, we are most likely going to have to add a bunch of other stuff, including a bunch of radio antennas and otherwise communication. What we already have is our front and rear couplers. So those are already going into our system. And the interesting thing is right now they communicate identically. So now there is no difference in terms of this microcontroller if it's plugged into the front or into the rear. Now that's where 
I was given a suggestion that we can potentially make a difference. Jimmy Swag here explains it very nicely. It says to use two on and off composite channels, in this case one and two, and when a locomotive is set to master, channel two has an on signal to the front connector, channel one out the rear, if the locomotive receives either one or two without being set as a master, it knows it's a slave. In that case, you can use this logic to communicate and determine if it is in fact facing the front or if it is facing the rear. So this way, it kind of just passes through. Now, I had a question saying, what if for some reason our master locomotive is second in line and we have a locomotive in front that is facing reverse? In this case, it'll be still coming in as in this example at channel 2, telling it to invert it. If we are controlling the master locomotive now, and you turn on composite number 1 on your train panel, meaning it is enabled, it is the master locomotive, in that case you send something to this switch here, which activates channel 4 on the front coupler, and activates, in this case, channel 5, on the rear coupler. So everything behind is going to be getting a channel 5. Everything on or everything behind the master is getting a channel 5. Everything in front of the master is getting a channel 4. Now this is the easy side of things. Where it gets a little dicier is in the case we are receiving it and we now have to process that information as a slaved locomotive to the primary. In this case, we can actually delete the compass and everything related to the compass because it is not needed for this style of um, interaction that we're trying to do here. So I'm going to look over here and you can see that we have the channel 3 and channel 3. That's what's currently receiving the compass. What we're going to do is remove that and make way for our updated version. So all this pretty much here has to go. With all that cleared out here, I will add a second composite read in both of these instances. And the first one's going to be 4, and the second one is going to be 5. I'm just going to go ahead and skip using channel 3 for now. We'll jump right to channel 4 and 5, connect everything up to those, and that's now giving us kind of our next point where we get to decide if whatever it is we're reading is in this instant from the front or rear of the master locomotive. You could see here what Jimmy Swaggy writes. If we receive one from the front, then it's going to go straight. If two from the front, invert and so on and so forth. So we're going to use this as a basis now for our microcontroller here. And actually a quick revision here. It is not the number channels, but it is in fact the um, on off the Boolean channels. So here will be channel four and channel 5, speaking from the uh, front and rear couplers, so in this case the rear couplers, and up here in this case from the front couplers. So channel 4 and 5 are now active, and you could see here I've actually had my little um, cheat sheet, I'm just going to put that here now, and we can add up here whether it is channel 4 or channel 5. So we said in the case of channel 4 is from the front coupler and channel 5 is rear coupler. And now that lets us actually speak and set the logic. Currently our system is if it our master locomotive sends channel 5 out the rear coupler. So if we are in another locomotive and we are receiving that channel 5 from our front coupler, that means we are in fact going straight, or we're positioned forward. So, if we receive a 4 from that front coupler, that means we should engage the reverse. And here, in our rear coupler, so if it is on the rear coupler, and it is facing backwards to us, meaning our rear coupler is receiving channel 5, then we're going to want to reverse. So that does leave channel 4 and channel 5 
in these instances without anything because we're really communicating whether or not it needs to enable the reverse position which we have here so that's where it's communicating and of course everything here passes through all the way into this one and onto the next train car or locomotive if that specific locomotive is not in master mode so he here we have it i've connected four locomotives all of them in different orientation or some of them in backwards orientation you can see the last one is in forward orientation so the white light is not on this one the white light is on because it is facing the backwards orientation and if we move up here into this one this one's also slaved no white light and of course this is our primary with the green light so you could see that this system just like that was able to determine and send proper signals onward to determine or to tell the rest how they're being controlled so i can go ahead and fire this up and bring forward this train and you're going to see that all the engines should be on and of course the third one down is now going to be in reverse mode while still um while not using or relying on that compass now we're just using our brains kind of whether it is attached on the front or the rear so thank you jimmy i love this suggestion and this was actually a big headache for me because for a while there i was sort of thinking what if we're in a really long train we're turning and all of a sudden that last locomotive starts to push us the other direction that really would not work so we have that and we got our nice little um flashing light here so if you're in the way you're going to want to get out of the way that was task number one and i'm happy to say that went with relative ease one thing i will note is that when we turn on our instrument panel here our number one channel that in itself should have been enough to set these other channels forward but instead i didn't really want to retrofit it that hard i just wanted to have it kind of you know, channel one could have been sending one channel and I could use channel four for something else. But anyway, I'm happy to keep it as it is. This one tells everything the system, yeah, we're on. And then the channel four and five determine which direction the cars are facing. So we have now all this and we have this free space here, which means we maybe don't have to put the um, this extra row. But I think we'll have to because once we end up with a instrument panel for our wireless mode and then a frequency and then a radio antenna we're most likely going to have to but not a big deal we have the space so i'm going to continue on this i've spent several hours and this is the finished product inside the train you can see that there are some new sort of systems here and if we jump to the microcontroller you'll see that it is now filled out and pretty much it, what started off as a simple task kind of compounded itself into becoming a bit more complicated but i'm very happy with the final product in essence what was added was the rov controls to control the frequency so you can see here it goes up to frequency seven and depending on if we are the master or the slave locomotive we're going to be receiving or sending that frequency that it's set to so again if you're the master you're sending through to that frequency but if the train knows that it's not the master then in fact it is receiving on that frequency and vice versa so then i've programmed in added all these nodes i'm not going to go and explain every little thing i did but in essence over here you can send it now via radio so this is if it's the master it's sending via radio and that's the gist of this on this side here if we are sleeved, then we are going to be receiving from the master. So in this case, here is the radio receiving. And you can see that in addition to this set and this set, which is from the couplers, now we've added this set here. So it receives if the train is both not, um, if it senses that it's not connected by the connector. So I had a discussion on my Discord today and people were saying the radio system's better, fair enough. I just prefer the um, 
the connector system for the reason that it knows the orientation now. We've set it such to recognize if it's the front or rear coupler, but if for some reason we're not attached with a coupler, and if we have the remote mode on, then we're gonna be receiving this information here. And in essence, that goes into this web and connects to this. Now, one fun little microcontroller addition I added was a shunting mode. And I tested it out with using A and D for forward and backward. And the brake turns on when it's not in use, but the issue with that is it's so slow and you can't adjust it. I just preferred to set it to channel five and six. So five is go back, six is go forward. So now we actually have remote control shunting as well as the remote control operation. Now for that reason, you could see these lights on the exterior of the cab. They're gonna be illuminated to tell whoever is remote controlling whether the locomotive is forward or backward shunting mode. And that's this up here as well. So the combination of this system does give us kind of the information we need to know. I'm just gonna reverse that like this. So forward and backward. And I mean, maybe it would've been better to put it somewhere in the center, but it doesn't matter. Presumably you're on the exterior if you are doing the remote control shunting and then it doesn't really matter. But the buttons are toggle only buttons. So I'm gonna turn on this system and see what we got, got here. So we turn on the ignition, turn on our displays, and now we just have our standard mode. I haven't touched anything yet. We're going to stop it. So that is our standard kind of driving mode. But now up here, we have a bunch of different controls. So of course, we know this master mode, master locomotive enabled. But in this case, there are no other locomotives. So we don't have to turn this on. Over here, we have wireless master slave system set reverse if backwards. I guess I have to adjust the it to say this is only on if this is already on so you have to still set your master and then this is if you're using the wireless mode if you're not using the wireless mode you can just keep it off and then over here remote shunting mode and change channel so if i press remote shunting mode just to show you this first we can press channel eight and then if i press five you can see that button turns on and we're slowly moving forward But if you press the button off, it stops. And imagine if you're outside here. So you press this, you press five, and you can see the little light on there. So it's moving forward. Now, of course, if you're not pressing anything, the brakes are fully engaged. And if you press six, it goes backwards until you press it again and it stops. So the brakes are fully engaged in shunting mode. Unless we press five or six, then they disengage and the motors turn on. So it's a nice little um, complementary system that can be used in addition to our full-on master system. One quick fix I gotta add here is the shunting mode actually worked even if the locomotive was off, which clearly is not a good thing. The engines have to be on in order for the shunting mode to be activated, otherwise you're just wasting and draining the battery. So now, I can implement that into the latest system. Now I've spawned up all the locomotives. As you can see here, the first one is set to master mode. The rest are just kind of follow al following along. And if I turn on the uh, shunting mode, which it is on, and press five, you can see that little indicator turn on and it is moving. Likewise, if I turn it off, the brakes will engage and everything will stop. If I press six, it'll start moving in the backwards direction if I press six again, it turns off. So the nice thing is you get the indicators. Now we don't get the indicators on the rest of the locomotives for the reason that they're just listening to the master. The master is telling them, turn on your, you know, go backwards or forward or whatever. But what is nice is that we get automatic, um, like right now you can see the brakes. If I press this and press five, the brakes disengage and the motor turns on. So we do get the full braking system on shunting mode, even if the um, controller is not set to full braking. And what I mean by that is, if you all recall, I added a little system here that says braking mode independent off, and you could see it's off, yet in shunting mode, they all still brake. Likewise, even if this is off, if you press the emergency brake, 
they all break. So emergency break overrides all and also in shunting mode whatever break we're currently set to here gets overridden. So if we press the shunting mode and press the remote and press 5 you'll see that it's going to start to... Oh, we have emergency break on. There we go. So that j dropped off and then if we press 5 again the brakes turn on. Now it doesn't show the throttle forward which is uh, something I'll look into actually but you could see that we're able to move back and forth and disable that brake. So this is a neat little system, very useful in this sort of a, um, circumstance. And now we're gonna get into the remote function. Now we're gonna run a little test as if we don't have them all connected. So in this case, pretend there is some kind of stock in between that does not get the uh, same type of um, connections so it's not made by me. And in this case now, if we go in here, you turn on master locomotive, you turn the key on. Now, we can set this, and let's set it to channel two. So that does nothing now, other than the fact it's set to channel two. But if we fly over to this one, and then go in here, if we turn this on, set it to channel two, there you go, engine's on, paired up, and then we can go to this one and do the exact same thing. But keep in mind, there's one little tidbit of information. So we set this one and set it to channel two, and we're on. Now, in theory, if I go and put the uh, throttle on that one, this one is still gonna wanna go forward, and these two are actually gonna crash. So when you do, have the remote controlled version and one is facing back you can see here it says set reverse if backwards so in this case we set reverse and that should be good to go one quick fix i did was if we have this locomotive facing backwards you have to press reverse otherwise it's going to go forward and crash but when you press reverse now the backward mode turns on on our master system so that is the last step to all this and if we jump on into our master locomotive here and give it some forward throttle you're going to see that everything will start to move along with us now the one thing to keep in mind is while everything is moving with us right now Technically, the brakes are set to independent braking, so if we bring this one to a stop and start braking, the rest are going to want to crash into us. Whereas, if we turn on the independent braking, and if I apply brakes, everybody will brake. So be aware of that. The automatic and independent brake system still works, even if we are on remote control. So you could end up with an accident if it wants to crash into you. Keep that in mind, please. Now over here you can see we have the systems on but right now it looks like they went ahead and paired up so the, 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 the connection is true in this case so we still have the wireless mode on but now it's actually being controlled by the fact it is connected physically so even if I turn that off you could see that that light stays on so it doesn't really make a difference Either which way, either system you use, you can end up with this micro, this sort of uh, system. So, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoy this creation. Let me know what you think when you see this. Obviously, what I find very interesting is the fact that I don't really know locomotives. So, I kind of invented my own system that will be useful and that will work in different instances. That was an interesting little glitch. If this one has the radio control mode on and then it loses connection, it actually uh, does not want to pair up. So these two were off until I turned off the radio controlled system. And only now they're connected, but they're connected with the... Um, they're connected now with this. But you know what? I don't find that a bug, I find that realistic. Of course, if you're using remote controlled method, you can't just go back and forth 
you have to stick to one system or the other. Of course, you're never going to come to a stage when you're randomly going to start to connect locomotives mid-drive. But, as you have it, I will have this latest version up for beta testing, so if people find that that is a problem, then I'll look into fixing it. I just can't see... I mean, what I'm kind of curious now is whether I can run, say, two locomotives paired somewhere else, and then have our main one. In theory, they should still connect or con or communicate with the main one via the radio. Well, actually, let's test that out. Okay, I've spawned up these two locomotives behind me. We're going to hop in here, turn this one on, and then start to back up into that other one. And you'll see that as we connect to this one behind us, we're still going to have one that is not connected. Okay. All right. Okay, so this one is still not connected. So now this one, when I turn this system on, all right, that's on. And of course, this one is not on. Now, if I turn this, and let's put it to channel two, or let's try channel three even. And then let's hop into this one. Can we run a combination of locomotives in and out of radio controlled mode? I guess we can, which makes sense. So if this one is directly attached, that's fine. Obviously, if I come in here and turn on the radio mode, then it's a little unhappy. But you could see because I'm still on the right channel or I'm not even on the, that channel. And even if I am, this overrides it. So this doesn't really matter. What happened in that previous case is we were using radio. We disconnected from the radio, but we paired them up in the meantime. So the whole thing was very confused and it didn't know what to do. Um, I can't see that happening in a practical sense. But now, if we apply throttle to this little... Oh, let's apply forward throttle. And you can see that last one actually paired up now, which is not good. Well, let's see what happens if I disconnect it. All right, you can see what happened there. It disconnected, the engine had restarted, and now it's still going. <laughs> so it didn't lose much momentum there. Anyways, I'm happy with this system. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think of the train as a whole. Now it's almost nearing completion. I've learned a lot. I know I haven't been true to, let's say, um, actual train standards, but I think with that comes kind of a refreshing view of what a train could be and how easy it could be to operate versus, of course, the very complex and realistic systems we have in real life. Anyway, thank you all for watching. Stay tuned for more. And as always, happy stormworksing, everyone.